As a computer scientist and an artificial intelligence researcher, there's no doubt in my mind that AI is going to change the fabric of our lives. But before AI can truly be deployed into the areas where it is the most necessary, like safety critical domains, there are still a number of key issues that we as engineers and researchers must address. Let me give you an example using ChatGPT, a really popular language model. We can ask ChatGPT questions and it will respond intelligently. And in this example, we ask ChatGPT to list 10 philosophers, and it gives us a pretty good list. But if you'll notice, all of the individuals listed on the screen are men. So when we ask ChatGPT why it didn't list any women, it apologizes profusely, which is very kind, and it lists 10 women philosophers. And we can continue to ask ChatGPT questions like this, asking it for non-Western philosophers, non-Western women philosophers. And once we have this diverse list of philosophers, we can go back and ask, OK, let's try again. Give me 10 philosophers. And instead, it gives us the same exact list of 10 white Western male philosophers. So, on the surface, this seems like a pretty trivial problem. Nobody was hurt in the creation of this video. Um, there are no real consequences to ChatGPT answering questions like this. But in reality, this is a classic example of algorithmic bias, which is present in almost every single model that has been deployed today. So when you and I think of bias, we're often thinking about human bias, which is when we are prejudiced towards a group of individuals or a system of beliefs. But bias in AI, even though it may propagate human biases, is completely different because it is quantifiable. We can assign a number to this. And more importantly, using this type of analysis, we can mitigate algorithmic bias. And that's because algorithmic bias fundamentally results because of imbalances in data that are used to train artificial intelligence models. So here's an example, an oversimplified one, of a data distribution that we might use to train an AI system. There are peaks in this distribution, so areas of high data, and there are areas of lower representation, places where we don't have a lot of data. When we're training models that involve human data, the data that is at the peaks of this distribution tends to come from, exactly as we just saw, white Western men. And data that comes from the underrepresented regions of this type of data set comes from women and people of color. So what would happen if we trained an artificial intelligence system on a data set that looked something like this? Let's consider the example of facial detection. Artificial intelligence-powered facial detection systems are everywhere. We use them on our phones daily, they're also used in surveillance systems, and the reports of these surveillance systems are used in the criminal justice system. But these algorithms are fundamentally biased towards lighter-skinned faces, because the overrepresented areas of this data set of a lot of commercial facial detection systems is a lot of lighter-skinned faces. So these algorithms end up being infamously bad at distinguishing darker-skinned faces from backgrounds, but they're very good at picking out lighter-skinned faces. And this can have pretty catastrophic effects. But although bias in artificial intelligence may propagate and amplify human, social, and racial biases, the problem with bias in artificial intelligence is a much more foundational one. It is due only to data distributions. And so this can present itself in a lot of different ways. Let's consider the example of an AI system that is, using, um, that is trying to predict whether or not a human has a very rare disease. In this case, the AI system is mostly trained on healthy patients because they're so much more common than individuals who are sick or who have this super rare disease. And that means that the model is fundamentally biased towards healthy patients, and it won't actually be able to determine which patients have a disease. And this can lead to a lot of false negatives and that can have life-altering consequences. So I truly believe that mitigating algorithmic bias is one of the largest challenges to modern artificial intelligence. Because without this mitigation, we won't be able to deploy any of the advances that we currently have into the real world, because they won't be able to perform well on everyone who needs to use them. So at MIT and at Themis AI, 
which is um, a startup that has spun out from MIT, this is exactly the type of problem that we are trying to address. We have developed systematic algorithmic approaches to debiasing artificial intelligence algorithms, even those where they're trained on such imbalanced data sets. And the way we do this is we fully unpack how an artificial intelligence algorithm is able to extract data from input. And we make sure that this algorithm is able to perform well on the most challenging scenarios that we can give it. And this results in a new class of models, AI systems that not only work on some of the data in their data sets, but all of them. So today, I hope that you've learned a little bit more about how bias in artificial intelligence really works, how the inputs to a model can affect how its performance works on all of us. And I truly believe that by mitigating algorithmic bias and building trustworthy, bias-free AI, we can get one step closer to deploying artificial intelligence in safety-critical domains. By creating these trustworthy artificial intelligence algorithms, we're one step closer to robotic surgeons operating in hospitals, autonomous vehicles driving on all of our roads, healthcare AI systems that are actually able to diagnose previously hidden diseases, and we can make sure that all of these advances work not just for some of us, but for all of us. Thank you.